two, one. What's up, what's up everybody? If you would take your seats, that would be fantastic. Give them that last hug, give them a high five. On your way back to your seat, tell somebody they looks like they've lost weight. That's a great thing to hear from somebody. Thank you, thank you very much, I appreciate that, thank you. Yeah, yeah, good morning everybody. We're so glad you're here this morning. And uh, let me say, if you're a first time guest, welcome. We're really glad you're here. Uh, I'm Pastor Mike, I'm the lead pastor here at Church of the Lakes, and uh, grateful Pastor Doug, our, our associate pastor, will be back this afternoon. They've been in Africa with their family, and uh, but glad to have them back, but we're glad you're here. And if you did not get an experience guide when you came through the door, our ushers have them. Uh, they would be happy to bring it to you. So just raise your hand, they'll bring it to you. Several things inside of there that are really, really important. So uh, if you don't normally get a guide, let me encourage you today to grab one. Uh, so raise your hand. You're going to need a couple of things that are in there that are not normally in there. So if you don't normally get one, uh, raise your hand. Let them bring them to you. One of the things that's in there for our first-time guest is something called a connect card. It's a way for us to connect with you. And, and you know, no hassle guarantee. Nobody's showing up at your front door. <laughs> Nothing like that. But we would like to communicate with you. And so uh, if you would fill it out, just uh, four items that we ask for information, and then mark first-time guest. That would be fantastic. If there's anything we talk about to sign up, you can use a connect card to sign up as you can go on our website, on the app, sign up and do all that. But also on the back of that card are, uh, is a prayer request what, uh, space. And um, I just, I wanna take an extra moment, more than I normally take at this moment to talk about prayer requests because there's nothing like the amazing holidays to bring out the terrible. Come on, somebody. Can we be honest? Can we be honest, like it, family stuff seems to get stirred up and you know, this time of the year is hard for widows and widowers and this time of the year is tough for singles sometimes and all this and, and so I just want you to know we would love to pray for you. And so on the back of that prayer request card, if you fill that out, our prayer team meets every Tuesday morning and we would love to, to pray for you. So fill that out, if you got a praise report, we would love to hear that as well. And. Um, one of the things we tell new first time guests, because we get asked, if I don't tell them that, is we don't pass buckets or offering plates or anything. We have boxes in the back of the room, so people put their offerings uh, in the box on their way out. Please don't feel compelled to do that if it's a first time guest. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that's how we do it. Uh, but I do want to uh, say thank you so much, church, for your giving. Uh, because, as you know, because we've chosen to be here at the high school and the way we do things, we give a lot to the community. Well, one of the most recent things that you have done that I'm very grateful for is Fellowship of Christian Athletes meets here in the high school. And it's been a struggle to keep that program going here, but there's a little energy going. And just so you know, the new SCA shirts for this year for Leesburg High School on the back say sponsored by Church of the Lakes. You bought those shirts for those kids. So thank you for your giving, and we're really grateful to be a part of that program. We have a new football coach, I don't know if anybody saw that. Uh, but we're excited. Leesburg High School's got a new head football coach. Uh, his name is uh, Stephen Moffitt. He was a uh, uh, starting quarterback for UCF. Any night fans in the house? Any nights? Okay, two. Very, there you go. Um, congratulations. We got your boy. Um, but anyway, so he's coming. I'll have a chance to meet him this week. But we're excited about the opportunities that, that God's given us. One of the things that's in your guide, that one of the things I wanted to make sure you got is, there's a card in there that talks about Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Here's what we're gonna ask you to do. We're gonna put one of those cards in the guide, one every week. We're gonna ask you each week to invite one person, right? So take that card that's inside of there and use that to invite somebody to come to either Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. Christmas Eve is gonna be awesome. Uh, it's winter wonderland. Nora and the team have got a whole bunch of things planned for out there uh, around the fountain in the courtyard. We got some bounce houses for the kids. We got hot chocolate and Christmas cookies and all kinds of cool stuff that's going on there. Savannah, who is leading worship this morning, she has been putting together a, a little, it's, it's not a kid's show, it's a multi-generational show uh, that they're going to be doing. So we have all, I think we'll have all six generations represented in the, in the little drama that they're going to do on Christmas Eve. So you're going to want to be here that night. And then, of course, we'll have our regular service Christmas Day, the 25th. All right, so... Here we are, Christmas is here. I wonder what your family traditions are. When you think back to family tradition, Christmas time, what do you do? And I was thinking like, what did we do? Um, and, and one of the things that sticks out in my mind is doing puzzles with my grandmother. 
So Nanny and I would do these big puzzles. We would do them on the pool table, or we would do them on the dining room table. And I can remember almost being, you know, like you're always looking for the edges, and it's who can find the edges first. And we would get a little competitive and all. But how many of you have ever done a puzzle, got to the end, and there was a stinking piece missing? Do you know what I'm talking about? You ever been that person crawling under the table, looking, or if you didn't, we do it on the pool table, so you're having to look in the pockets and the whole, you know, kind of deal, and then you'd accuse each other, come on, what you do with it? Stop playing around, so your pocket in, right? Or you'd accuse your cousin of stealing it or the whole nine yards. I want to talk to you over the next four weeks as we prepare for, for Christmas, and just so you know, I, Jesus was not born on December 25th. Does everybody know that? Right? Like, that, like that's, that's not the way this happened. That's just the day that we choose to celebrate uh, when he came. But I think it's so critical for us uh, in this time period to focus our minds and our hearts on what this time period really is. What, what it means to prepare for the coming of the king. What, what, is, what does that mean? And we're so distracted with so many other things. Anybody here have all your Christmas shopping done? Anybody? I got a few OCD people in the house. Good, right? We we got party. Anybody have a million parties on the on the docket? Yeah, like we we're, we're asked to show up at a, at a bunch of different things. We've got all these things going on that are distractions. But I want to go back to this puzzle idea that that missing piece because that missing piece is P I E C E. But I think what Christmas is all about is actually the missing piece P E A C E. Jesus came because there's a missing piece. I don't think that's really hard to see when you look at our politics. Come on, y'all. Is there a missing piece? Divorce rates? Is there, is there a missing piece? Children, families, broken homes, those struggles, bullying that takes place, the chaos, the strife, the wars, the rumors of wars. I mean, as, as we talked about last week, as we gather today and we're comfortable sitting here nice in our chairs and our air conditioning, we have brothers and sisters being bombed in the Ukraine as we speak. There's a missing piece, the worry, the fear, the, the anxiety. There's, there's clearly something missing. I want to do something interesting. I dare you to Google search how much pharmaceutical companies make off of our lack of peace. Billions, billions of dollars is made because of our lack of ability to sleep without their help. Of our lack of ability, and, and, and please don't hear any condemnation for you that might be taking something right now. That's not what that's for. It's just to understand the world's trying to give us a peace. And it's not the real peace. I mean, this world is literally profiting off of our lack of peace. Marketing today is really an effort to show you where you lack peace and how we can solve that for you. I was watching a football game last night and a Volkswagen commercial came on and I wish I had, 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 had gone back or something. It didn't hit me till later on in the football game. Oh my gosh, that's exactly what we'll be talking about tomorrow morning. But the Volkswagen commercial basically showed the chaos of life and kids and some of what you guys went through this morning, herding cats in your house to try to get them ready for church. And then it showed this Volkswagen as if this Volkswagen was peace. This Volkswagen was the, 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 the place, right? I wonder, would CNN or Fox News profit anything if everyone got along? Now, the reality is this Fox News is not in the business of peace. And CNN is really not in the business of peace. And MSNBC, and I'm not picking on any particular one or taking a party there. I'm just simply saying I want us to recognize that political consultants, for the most part, work on how they can solve your problems. How can I? When you think about the, the structure of our culture and our world, it's built up on anti-peace. It's built off of, can I market or create something that solves something for you, that gives you this temporary sense of, Pete, you better, you better get the new car. You better, you better get the, the new phone. You know, I, I got an iPhone 13 the other day. I saw the commercial for the new 14. 
And something went through my head like, oh, I, bet I should go get the 14. And I thought, what? Why? What, what, is, what is wrong with your phone? There's nothing wrong with my phone. It works just fine. It's a really nice phone. But, but, but our world, listen to me, our, our, our world is feeding us this message. And it's in the context of a world of anti-peace, of lack of peace, of chasing things, that Isaiah 9, 6 says this, because it was the same story back then as it was now. It says this, for to us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, here it comes, Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. And then later on in Isaiah 26, 3, it says, You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Now fast forward 700 years, and we get the announcement of Jesus' birth. And the angels appear to the shepherds. Luke 2, 10, it says, And the angels said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news. How many of you know that's what our world's looking for? In an anti-peace culture, they're looking for good news. They're, they're, they're looking for something good that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior's been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angels praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven. And on earth, peace to those to whom his favor rests. Let me read that again. Glory to God in the highest heaven. And on earth, peace to those whom his favor rests. Let me pray. Father, as we push in a little bit today, as we try to discover peace, Holy Spirit, would you speak deep into our souls today? We need your help. In an anti-peace culture, and often we have created anti-peace behaviors in the way that we act. Holy Spirit, would you bring peace into our souls today through your word, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Real peace. Real peace. I mean, you know there's such thing as a false peace. Right? Why does this matter so much? Well, it matters so much because when there's peace in a home... And, and something goes down. How many of you know that a home with peace, you can accomplish in five minutes what you can't accomplish in five hours when there's not peace? When you're in a school, here, here, here we are in a, in a public high school, and when you have administrators that have peace in their lives, they administrate better, they, they lead better, they, they discipline better, when kids come and they have peace, and Tomas was just talking about this morning, so many of their cuts come with anxiety and fear. What they're talking about right now with our kids is they're trying to create what they call safe spaces. They're spaces that when kids come to school, they can have a place that's just safe, right? It's, it's what we've seen in our teen center with what we call the living room where the couches are. It's, it's, it's just a, it's, it's a safe space. How many of you know when there's a place of peace, kids learn? How many of you know when teachers are at peace, they teach better? Right? How about when roommates are living together and they're trying to decide to what level of cleanliness are we going to decide in this household? How many of you know when there's peace in that conversation, it goes better? How about a at a job? When a job has peace, that even when there's conflict, but a boss, a, a, a boss brings healthy decision-making into it, that that business grows. Scientists, doctors have, have even said that somebody who is at peace in their mind and in their heart, their body actually heals faster. Like you, you can get out of the flu faster because of peace. So I want to say it this way to you today. This is my big idea for today. Peace is powerful but you have to let it in. Peace is powerful, but 
but you have to let it in. Look at Colossians 3 and 12. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. When those are hard for me, anybody else? Are y'all are holier than me? Those are easy for you? But those are tough, right? To, to be gentle, to be kind, to, to be patient, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If any of you has a grievance to give someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. I want to, we're going to memorize that one today. See that verse 15? Let me read that again. Would you read it with me? Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. Let's do that again. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. One more time. One more time. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. I want to walk through that verse today. And um, I want to, I, I'm going to drill, this, drill this, this, this verse into your heart today. But I, I want to break it down into different pieces. And, um, and, and I, I'm hoping that God will, will speak to you in a, in, in, in a very, very powerful way. Um, I'm, I'm laughing because I'm teaching on peace today. But right now I'm having a, a, a crisis moment and you don't even see it. And my crisis moment, James, is that my computer's about to die. So if y'all could give me a power cord, that would be fantastic. How funny God is, right? How funny God is in, in the process. Let the, the peace of Christ, what is the peace of Christ? Well, the word in the original language is shalom. Shalom, peace, shalom. It's, it's a great, thank you, Jim. You're so cool, bro. I appreciate you. Um, aren't you grateful for these guys? They're really, really good. Thank you. Appreciate you. Shalom, peace. Now I'm at peace. Look, it's got the little air. Yeah. Shalom. Shalom. This, this peace, it's, it's much more than the absence of conflict. Or much more than the, the, the absence of chaos or confusion. Shalom, listen to me, it's a relational idea. It is to be in right relationship with God, right relationship with people, and to be a good, in a good place with your surroundings. Say that again. It's in right relationship with God, right relationship with people, and in a good place with your surroundings. It's, it's thriving. It's flourishing. It's fullness. It means hello in some places. Like if you go to Israel right now, they would probably greet you, shalom, shalom, right? Any, any Spanish speakers? Do I have Spanish speakers here today? Where are my Spanish speakers? Okay, the, the, one, the one thing that I could think of that was, was, was kind of a comparison to this is if you speak Spanish is uh, bendiciones, blessings, right? Bendiciones is a way to say, it's a hello, but it's, it's something more than this. Romans 14 and 7, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking. And it, it, it's not a matter of building a 401k. And it, it, it's not a matter of having the perfect portfolio. And it's not a matter of having the perfect house. And it's not a matter of all these things. We can add what's going on here, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. This is the kingdom of God. Righteousness is when you get right with God. It's an imputed righteousness, right? It's, it's given to you. It's nothing you can do. It's a righteousness that simply you surrender your heart to Jesus and, and, and he makes you righteous because of what he did. We, 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 we received communion today because of an imputed righteousness. Man, there was nothing I could do, nothing you can do to make God love you less. Nothing, nothing you can do to make God love you more. He just loves you like God loves. Agape is the word. Unconditional love. And then there's joy. There's joy in the Holy Spirit. When you got the Holy Spirit, you saw some people around you maybe today in worship, and they looked a little crazy. Can I just tell you that's joy? That's joy. That's joy because to whom much has been forgiven, woo, 
little do they appreciate it. Come on, y'all. Some of us have just been in church too long and we've forgotten. We've forgotten what it felt like to be in the gutter. We've forgotten what it felt like to be in that place when God would say, yeah, you, I got you. And I'll pull you up out of that place and make something out of you and, and, and give you life and give you something, that joy in the Holy Spirit. But right in the middle of righteousness and joy, what does it say? Shalom, peace. The kingdom of God is about peace. The kingdom of this earth is about anti-peace. Anti-peace is the way of this world. It runs on anti-peace, right? Whether it be, we talked about the drug companies or our politics, but, 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 but in the middle here, in, the, in a world full of anti-peace, we are the ambassadors of peace. So that leads to the next question. Well, what is peace? Right? Well, what is peace? Because if there's a real peace and a false peace, how, how do I know this? And what does that really mean? John 14 and 27, Jesus says these words. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give it to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. I love that. What does it say? Jesus said, peace I leave with you. What's the next two words? My, my peace. I get, I get this picture. He's like, peace I leave with you. And we're like, okay, cool. I want some peace. And he goes, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> my, my peace. That's different. It's way different than what you've seen in the world. It's, it's way different. There are fake versions of peace. Trying to counterfeit as peace. There is a peace that comes from hell and it will destroy you. Here's how the world gives peace. Man, if I had more money, then I would be at peace. So you hustle, right? Or you create a side hustle to get a little, little extra going. How many of you know you get that money and you get temporary peace? But guess what? You need more. See, that's not peace. That's a false peace. That's, 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 that's something that you've got to keep going and you've got to keep going. I can't have peace unless I feel secure. And you can't feel secure unless you have enough money. And I get some money, but then the economy does what the economy is doing. And good Lord, did you see what I've got to pay at the gas tank? Oh man, I only thought I needed this much money to retire. Right, seniors? And so the world wants us to chase false ideas of peace. Man, you better get your education. And not just get your education, you better go to the right school. Don't pick the wrong school. Right? Or no, you're on the other side of the fence. No, don't go to school. It costs too much money. You better get a trade going. You better go to trade school or whatever. Can I say this? Please stop telling people what to do with their lives and let the Holy Spirit do that. Let's start there. That's a lesson for another day. But the point is this, is we're chasing. If I get to this school, is this the right school? Is this the right place to be? I got to do this because if I don't go to school, I'm, I'm, I'm going to waste my time and then I'm not going to get a good career. And I need a good career because I need a boo. Come on, singles, where are you? Right? For my older folks, a boo is a, a boyfriend or girlfriend, right? So, so I need a boo, but if, I need a, if I'm going to get a boo, I need a car. Come on, y'all, you only get a boo if you got a good car to pick the boo up in. Right, so I'm gonna chase the car, but but I, if I get the car and, and I got the boo, and well now we're gonna have to get a ring, and then now we're gonna have to get a house, and I'm chasing peace, and I'm chasing peace, and once we get to the house, now we're gonna have to upgrade the car because oh, whoop, we're pregnant. Better get a swagger wagon. Come on, y'all. <laughs> Come on, you know you're trying to be cool as parents. You ain't cool. It's a swagger wagon in your mind. Everybody else is just an old people car. Come on. But do you, do you hear? Like, this is our story, really. I mean, it's, it's, it's my story in a lot of ways. The peace of this world always overpromises and always underdelivers. Always. That's the way the world gives peace. And Jesus says, my, my, my peace I give to you. I give you a peace that you don't have to earn, that you don't have to hustle for. This you can receive, the peace of Christ, my peace, 
By the way, did you know he's the God of peace? Look at Romans 16 and 20. The God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. I love that verse. Come on, somebody. We used to sing that in kids' church. They used to sing that with kids, and they would jump up and down and crush Satan. I don't know if that's right or not, but whatever. The God of peace will soon crush. It's, all this is going to get fixed. All this is going to get fixed. Everything that you're going through, everything that you're dealing with, God has it under control. Look at the last part of it. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Be gracious. I don't know if Satan's coming at you right now or if you're going through some stuff, but I just, somebody needs to hear the God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. The God of peace will soon take care of your situation. 2 Corinthians 13 and 11. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Where is it? Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Amen? Amen. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 16. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. You hear that verse? May the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. May you have peace the day before the Florida game and the day after the Florida game. Right? Choose shalom, peace. Shalom. Something deep inside that's just something more to that. This is the peace of Christ. Let's break that verse down a little bit more. Let. Let is the first fill-in on that next part. Let. You have to choose shalom. You have to choose peace. It's a choice for you to make, but this is how we choose it. Look, let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. I've heard of, I, I really uh, like musicals and Broadway and, and those kind of things. And I've heard of Broadway shows that they would put out in, in New York and they just don't hit it. They just don't get the traction. They just don't have the thing. And I, I read the story about this one particular show and finally they figured out, they took the supporting actor and the lead actor and they switched roles. And they put the supporting actor as the lead and the lead actor as the support and boom, it exploded. What's the point? Church, if you could just get the right lead in your life, your story would come together. If you could just get the right lead in your life, your story would come together. I'm tempted, I don't know about you, but peace is when I'm ruling. Anybody else a control freak like me? Right? Peace is when I'm ruling and I'm in control and I have it all under control. The key to peace is getting the right guy in charge, and that right guy, his name is Jesus. As long as you think you're Batman, and you don't understand you're always going to be Robin, as long as we believe that, when we believe I'd be happy, I'd be satisfied if I could just get my preferences on everything, if everything, in your marriage, if you could just get your preferences in your marriage, everything would be better, right? Right? If, they would, if the toilet paper would go the right way. And if the vacations were to the right place. Right? And we spent money the way I thought we should spend money. But if I was ruling, then it would not be good. <laughs> let the peace of Christ rule. It doesn't say let the desires of your own heart rule. You will never be satisfied getting all your needs met. Which is why there's people that have money and options and privileges and they're still miserable. Let the peace of Christ rule. Let the peace of Christ rule. See, I'm prone to believe that if I'm, if I'm in charge, it's all going to be good. Yet what I need is the peace of Christ to take charge of my life. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. 
Do not be anxious about anything. Anybody ever get anxious? Anybody ever worry? Or are you just totally chill? But in every situation, every situation, the temptation is to believe that I can apply what we're doing here, here. What I mean by that is, some of you came today and you're listening to a nice Christian TED talk after the little Christian concert in a Christian church and I'm gonna pray here. But when I go out there to the real world, it's different. Like I can pray about stuff here, but once I go into the real world, you know the real world where my employee has not shown up for the fifth day in a row and I'm ready to strangle them? The real world where I've got a demon-possessed boss who micromanages everything? Anybody? Don't point at them. <laughs> the real world where you've got teachers that are unfair from your perspective, students. You're married to somebody, and you're thinking, this is never going to work. Mom said I shouldn't marry him. Feels like we've been married forever. Here we are on day four. <laughs> In every situation, it says, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, this is good, y'all. Listen to these words. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding can't figure it out. You can't get in the science lab and write up the equation. You can't do one, two, three, four, five, six steps to make the, no, 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 no. The, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts. Will guard your hearts. That term, guard your heart, the, the original language is, is the same thing where we would get the idea of an umpire or a referee. For those of you who watched and I'm not picking, relax. But for those of you who watched the, the Florida, Florida State game, right at the end, Florida's got the ball, they're driving, and they throw a ball out to the flat, and one of our guys knocks the ball away for Florida State. And it was pass interference, no pass interference, pass interference. How many of you know every Florida fan could pass a lie detector test that it was pass interference? And every Seminole fan could pass a lie detector test that it wasn't pass interference? See, in the chaos of our lives, in the chaos of what's going on around us, we just have a limited perspective, and guess what we need? We need a referee. We need somebody who's objective outside of the chaos to make a ruling. That's what this means. I need the Holy Spirit of God to rule in my life because I'm too involved. I, I, I'm too one-sided. I, I, I'm, I'm too into the mix and in the process. I need this outside objective on liquor. In the chaos, you need to let the peace of Christ reign. It will rule you in a way that regardless of what the call is on the field, that you have a peace. Regardless of what's going on in your life, that you have a peace. Not like the peace that the world gives. Not that depends on circumstance. You got a peace that depends not on what's going on around you, a peace of the reality of what's inside of you because of what happened for you 2,000 years ago on a cross. The peace of Christ rule in your hearts. I'm walking through this because I just need you to remember he doesn't forsake his people. He doesn't forget where you are. He, he, he's not clueless to what you're going through. But when you let the peace of Christ rule, you understand Jesus will sometimes allow you to go through hard times just to show this world how good he is. I didn't get any amens on that one for some reason. How many of you have been in trouble but God came through? Anybody? Anybody got that testimony? How about another time besides that one that you were in a bad spot or trouble and God came through? Anybody? So why is it that we get to the next one and we have spiritual amnesia? Why is it that we forget how good our God is? Peace is powerful, church, but you have to let it in. You have to let it in how? Well, it takes a referee of your soul, prayer. And you will receive peace that passes understanding, a peace of Christ, not a pseudo peace of this world. 
Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Let me, let, me, let me go on with this verse and we're filling in and learning it as we go. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body, as members of one body, you were called to peace. Look at 1 Corinthians 12 and 12. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. Something you got to know about letting this peace in is there's no such thing as having peace by yourself, but not being at peace with other people. It doesn't work that way. Letting, letting the peace of, of Christ rule in you means you forgive as Jesus forgave. Matter of fact, 1 Peter says this. You ready, husbands? If you and your wife are fighting and you're kind of being a jerk to her, and you're like, whatever, and you go over here and you go, God, man, would you do stuff, blah, blah, blah. Guess what that, what that scripture says? He ain't listening. He says, go fix it. Then I'll hear you. It's exactly what it says in 1 Peter. In other words, my lack of relationship here can cause there to be an issue with my relationship here. We all know my lack of relationship here can definitely cause a relationship here, right? If I'm not in right relationship with God, it's really hard to be in right relationship with people. But I don't know if you've ever thought about it, that we are one body and the peace of Christ is ruling in your heart when you are at peace with others. But when you have angst, and when you have struggle and you have a problem, that's something to be dealt with. Matthew 18 says, go to your brother or sister and deal with them. For those of us who do it wrong all the time, as soon as we get upset, we tell our spouse, we tell this person, we tell that person, instead of going to the person that we have a struggle with and saying, this is the struggle that I have with you. I wonder how often People come to church, because I, I get this sometimes, people will come to church and go, I tried the God thing, and I don't think it's really real. I didn't really feel anything, I didn't get anything, a bunch of weird people raising their hands, singing real loud. Guy told a couple jokes, or whatever, but I, I don't know. Because they never felt the presence of God, because they never felt the peace of God. What they're not realizing in the moment, it is that they're angst with people. And their anger and unforgiveness that blocks their relationship with God, that's causing a problem with this connection with God. Shalom. Shalom is right relationship with God, right relationship with people, and a right spot with my surroundings. See, we're a body. Which means we're parts of a body and we, we've got to function. I don't know if any of you have ever played baseball or, or golf. Maybe those are two good examples. But you're going to need both hands. Right? You, you need to either, whether it be on the baseball bat or whether it be on the golf club. You're, you're gonna, but, but if you've got a broken hand and you walk out to the golf course, you walk out to T1, and they, might, and they match you up with some people, and you have a broken hand, and you start swinging, and they're just going to look at you like you're crazy. It's going to hit you. So, is our ineffectiveness as a body, as a church, sometimes because individual members are wounded and haven't dealt with it? And I thought, God, I, I, I asked this question this week and I challenge you. God, where am I hindering the body? Because I don't realize, I... I, I in America, we like this Lone Ranger concept, right? I, I'm on my own. I do my own thing. I don't have anything to do with anybody else. The more you read scripture, the more you understand we're so interrelated. We're, we're so connected that what I do affects you and what you do affects me. Matter of fact, the Bible goes on to say that sin goes generationally. That a father's sin will follow the children for a second and third and fourth generation. So we've got to be real with the church and say, if we're going to be at peace with God, if we're going to let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts as one body, then that's what it means for me to get real with my stuff. For me to get real with my hurts. This is why we say you need to be in a small group. 
and, and a lot of people push back. I'm not doing the small group thing, and you know, they're too cool for school, or it's a pride issue, or it's an insecurity issue, or whatever it is. But I want to challenge you with a concept that the Holy Spirit really challenged me with, and that is, am I potentially the one holding back the church from being all that it should be? Because I'm the broken hand that won't admit that I'm broken. See, letting the peace of Christ rule in your heart is being okay with, I'm broken. Being okay with, I'm, I'm a mess. Being okay with, I got some stuff that need to be dealt with and worked on inside of my life. And I understand if I don't address those things, I could be the hindrance of the church. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body. You were called to peace. And then it ends with three very simple words. It's just kind of funny. It says, and be thankful. And be thankful. Be thankful. And by the way, this is how this, this kind of ends. And be thankful. We can say those three words and be thankful. Be thankful, be thankful. One of the signs, listen to me, this is, this is powerful. One of the signs of a darkened heart is when you cannot be thankful for something. It's amazing when people get divorced, how often this happens. Fairly soon afterwards, there's an aha moment of everything that's now missing. Because I had gotten so against that person and focusing so much on their offenses that when they were gone, I now recognized what they did for me. I, did, I recognize now what I actually am grateful for and I miss in the process. What happens when you're so aware of the offense that you're not aware of the blessing? Hmm. Gratitude does not erase problems or disagreements, but it does highlight hope. When was the last time you highlighted hope in your marriage? Highlighted hope in your home, highlighted hope in, in, in your workplace. Where there is gratitude, it makes unity possible, which makes peace possible. Boy, this is a revolutionary thought in our world right now. Right? You ready? Not every Republican is evil. Not every Democrat is evil. Matter of fact, they were both created in the image of God. Let peace rule doesn't mean you give up your conscience. Don't hear me on that. But it does mean you listen and disagree respectfully. Simply for the fact that they bear the image of God. I think my sermon is over. Whoever the lighting person was did not like the political comments. <laughs> Hear me on this, church. I, I, I mean this. I work out with a Muslim Democrat every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We love having conversations. We disagree on everything on the planet. But he said to me the other day, and I took it as one of the greatest compliments I've ever gotten. He said, and, he, and he's got a little bit of a Middle Eastern accent. He said, I love working out with you, and I love having conversations with you. I thought, there it is. Let the peace of God rule in your heart in such a way where you don't have to lose your mind. Come on. Everything out there, just chew them up and spit them out, right? Everything out there says, go at them, win the argument. Rawr, rawr, rawr. What is that? Anti peace, anti peace, anti peace. And the scripture says, let the peace of Christ rule in your heart as one body and be thankful. I'm thankful for my friend. I'm 
thankful for the fact that I get to practice what it really means to be Jesus. Because it's easy to be Jesus when you're around Jesus people. Come on, y'all. But what about when you're not? What about when you're at work? Let the, let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. You need to vote. You need to be political. We're political. We're involved. We straight up. I have some opinions. You need to hear that straight up. But I need you to also hear something. I have a Savior, and He's coming back. And when He's coming back, He's taking over. Ain't gonna be no Republicans or Democrats. Ain't gonna be. Ain't gonna be no United States, Russia. Anywhere. Listen to me. He's gonna take over, and His kingdom is gonna rule. Let me show you to you. And back in Isaiah nine and seven. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and how long? Forever. This is going away. In the meantime, church, let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. Anybody ever seen a, a, an amazing trailer for a movie? You ever seen a trailer that you go, oh my God, I can't wait to see that movie. Like when the new um, Top Gun came out. Come on, y'all. Right? Or maybe like Black Panther. Man, when I saw the Black Panther trailer, I like, gotta see that movie. Come on, yeah, I got some kids nodding their heads. Can I say this to you? Listen to me. Your heaven's trailer. Your life is heaven's trailer. Let the peace of God rule in your heart so that by the way you live, this anti-peace culture will look at you and go, what is that? And I gotta get some of that. The peace of Christ rule in your heart that you may have one body and be thankful. So can I challenge you this week to be thankful? You need to say thank you about a billion times this week. You need to tell your kids why you're thankful for them. You need to tell your spouse why you're thankful for your spouse. You need to go to work and find the biggest jerk at work and find something to say you're thankful for. They wore a shirt without a stain on it. I mean, it might be hard, I get it. But listen to me, be thankful. As followers of Christ, it's not just a name. It's a state of mind called shalom, peace. Not this world's peace, my peace, Jesus said. So let me ask you this morning, where are you with that? If you're really honest with yourself, do you live shalom? When you think about this week, and you were in the left lane, and they were riding in the left lane, When your spouse said those words to you this week, and you just thought, why did I marry this person? When your kids lose their mind, or I don't know, you find weed in your daughter's purse, or when you go to work and somebody has, has stolen some money from the company. When you get into the community and there's can't listen to me, expect the anti-peace. It's normal for this world. What's not normal is for people who live by the name of Jesus to also live anti-peace. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart that you may live as one body, unity, and be thankful. Can we be challenged to live that this week? Would you bow your heads? Let me pray for you this morning. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for this amazing challenge. It challenges me like crazy. I so often am an instrument of anti-peace. I so often participate in anger and frustration. Holy Spirit, right now I'm asking, would you help us to receive your peace 
to know that you have all things under control, to know your government will rule forever. And that when you said it is finished on the cross, it was not just a saying, it is a state, shalom, that we can live in, but we've got to choose it. Today I choose it. And if there's anybody here you don't feel like you have peace with God. Maybe you never had a moment to pray something like this. Let me give you some words. Jesus, I surrender my life. I want shalom. I want peace in my heart. I don't want to be in angst with you anymore. I don't, I don't want to feel against you anymore. I don't want you to feel so far away from me anymore. God, I want you close to me. So today I surrender my heart to you. Ask you to come into my life. I want your shalom in my life. Thank you for loving me and forgiving me. I commit my life to you. I pray it in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 We're going to close service in just a moment. We do it in a different kind of way. The worship team is going to worship you one more song. You're welcome to stay in worship with them. But I realize some people need to go, need to go get the kids. No problem. We just ask this. When you leave the auditorium, please do it quietly. Because people are still worshiping, because the people are praying. Our prayer team is going to come now. Prayer team, come on down. Prayer team is going to be up front here. And maybe there's some of you, listen to me, don't walk out of that door feeling like you're in, not at peace. Because one of these team members would love to pray with you. So come down and pray with somebody. And today, Life Step One would love to see some of you or like to know more about the church. Come join us for the start of Life Steps today. Hey, church, let the peace of Christ rule in your heart this week. Amen? Just stay to your feet. Let's close in worship. So the definition of exalt is to put above, to make the ruler of. Are we willing to exalt Jesus, the Prince of Peace, over our lives, over all? Let us sing this together this morning. Thank you. 